hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the Samsung 980 Pro with a heatsink. A number of you like myself when you saw that Samsung finally after more than a year of having their SSD on the market finally released a version with a heatsink on board were like my god what took so long a number of you who jumped on the bandwagon like myself who got this SSD early doors when it was first announced, it was like September 2020 and then a release, not even a month, month and a half later, we're like, oh my god, this is great. Bit pricey, but it's great. But I'm going to have to get myself a heatsink. So we all went out and bought like $10 heatsinks like this, the Ella 10. And then, while all the other SSDs were arriving on the market, yeah. Uh, your WD Blacks, which had a heatsink. Your CK Via Cudas that had a heatsink. Your Sabrina that had a heatsink. Everyone had heatsinks included because PCIe Gen 4 SSDs get super hot. Everyone was kind of, what do I need to get? And then a number of you, when you would buy a Samsung 980 Pro, you'd be like, right, well, I need to get a heatsink. And you'd contact, uh, contact um, Samsung and go, right, I need to get myself a heatsink. What one do you recommend? And they'd all, like, everyone I spoke to at Samsung would say the same thing. There are a number of different M2 heatsinks available on the market. We recommend buying one of the many that are available. Because they didn't have one available and they wouldn't pick a lane. So I was chuffed to bits when they finally released one with a heatsink. We've already done... PC benchmarking of this and the temperature that was generated on there was pretty good, pretty good. Not fantastic, but still pretty good um, for an SSD that can run quite hot. You find that with the early generation PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, that they can run quite hot hot and again that isn't just samsung there all of the first and even early second gen pcie gen 4 nvme ssds that arrived on the market ran a little hot it took them a while because they before they could really work out things at the firmware and the component level so in today's video we are going to be running temperature tests comparing this uh, 980 pro with its first party heatsink against the 980 pro 1tb with an Elateng, a simple $10 M2 heatsink. We're going to be running on the PS5. We're going to be doing heavy read, heavy write. We're going to be doing extensive testing of the internal SSD and ambient airflow um, in the Demon's Souls uh, remake game for PS5. And then we're going to be running the Matrix Unreal 5 tech demo. Once again, testing the controller of the SSD and the ambient airflow of the entire system. Why are we doing that? Well, nice and simple. When we are running this PS5, the, P the SSD that's inside is going to be generating a lot of heat, but also is kept in that bay with the lid there on the top. It's covered over when it's running, so it can get quite, quite hot. And it's an SSD that already gets quite, quite hot. So we want to know the overall temperature of the system when this is all going on, and does it negatively impact that system? So that's what we're looking at. Is the new heatsink that the Samsung arrives with better than going for a simple $10 heatsink? Even though if you're going to go for a Samsung anyway, this costs maybe $20 to $30 more to get the heatsink version. Should you go for that or going for the non-heatsink version with an inclusive heatsink there on top for $10? Now, we should, just before I get to the results, when I mention the price, I think a number of you who have just arrived on the SSD scene may be wondering why that heatsink is so expensive. Let's take a proper look at it here. Um, because it is a good looking heatsink. It's very swish, it sits inside the system very, very well. One of the main reasons this costs as much as it does is because it, although the SSD inside was one of the first in the market to hit those benchmark speeds of 7,000 megabytes per second, the heatsink version came out in mid-December. 2021 more than a year like a year and two or three months later and the consequence is when this has arrived on the scene this is being sold at much closer to the recommended retail price or rrp than this one is changing hands for right now because it's been on the market for more than a year there's more fl um, fluidity in the pricing there that's why when you're seeing a lot of retail outlets that are listing this SSD, with and without a heatsink, the price difference between them is bordering on criminal, I think some people think. It's not because they are charging just that for a heatsink. They're charging it because it's a new 
product and it's kind of a new thing tax that just seems to apply to anything these days from iPhones to SSD so yes there is a price disparity between them but the further you dig in uh, dig into it you see why that one that over one year release difference makes a huge impact there but that's enough about retail you didn't come here for a, a TED talk on e-commerce let's get into our temperature testing and see how these two compare so for my first test, I wanted to do a heavy write operation where I move over around 360 gig of data from the internal PS5 SSD and onto the Samsung SSD on this PS5. Now, one of the first things that really struck me about this is the Elateng and the uh, Samsung heatsink here. Both of them, because they're inside their M2 slot, regardless of the heatsink, they've got the cover on top of them, and the result was they both ran quite hot because of that closed environment, with the Samsung starting at 30.2 and the L10 at 29.3. Remember, this is the controller temperature, the brains of the SSD. Now, notably, as you can see there on screen, the L10 is the one that's running the hottest, and it's going to end at 55.3 degrees, whereas the Samsung's going to end at 45.3 over this eight-minute transfer. So, although the L10 was certainly the hotter at 26 degrees, than the Samsung at 15.1, it was still a lot hotter than I expected it to be overall. My next test was taking advantage of the Demon's Souls remake for PS5, a launch title and certainly one of the most demanding. Now, once again, because both of these heat sinks, regardless of the SSD inside, are encased in that little M2 slot with the cover and the plates of the PS5 reattached, the result was that the temperature was quite high. One of the earliest things that really surprised me at the top of the screen, where the controller is, and the bottom of the screen, where you can see the airflow of both of those SSD temp tests, you can see the sound Samsung started noticeably hotter for the controller. It didn't dissipate heat as well as I would have liked to have seen. Now it started at 38.9 for the controller compared with the L10's 25.3 and by the end the Samsung had broken into the 50 degrees. By the end of this test which took place over the course of well over 40 minutes ending at 52.9 degrees an increase of 14 degrees and the L10 ending at 48.6 still pretty close and a larger increase at 20 23 degrees indicating it would have gone higher over time but still the Samsung there ended hotter which was a real surprise. In terms of ambient airflow on the other hand the Samsung was able to do a much better job starting at 26.2 and ending at 26. It actually lowered the ambient temperature whereas the Elateng with an inability to get rid of that heat made the PS fan work harder increasing and ending at 28 degrees overall so the Samsung won that at least. The next test took advantage of the Unreal 5 Matrix Tech demo. Now, as you can see, once again from the top of the screen, they started actually a great deal more similar this time. Able, the Samsung, to dissipate your heat a great deal better. They both started at 33.7, and as time went on, we can see that they were both rising quite substantially for this rather demanding um, storage engine game. Now, at the bottom of the screen, with regards to the air temperature, as this temp, uh, temp test went ahead, the Samsung started a pinch hotter at 27 degrees, with the L10 at 26.1, but over time, we saw that the Samsung didn't really increase. It hadn't finished dissipating. And by the end of this test, the ambient air temperature on the Samsung test, while this game was being played for around 40 minutes, it ended at 26.1 degrees by the end of this test. Whereas the Elateng ended this test in a short bit at 27.9. So the Elateng at uh, ambient air temperature was 1.8 degrees increase overall. Whereas the Samsung was actually lower at 0.9 degrees on the ambient temperature. Going back to the controller on the SSD however, the Samsung ended things at 50 degrees on the nose. As you can see we're closely reaching that mark now. Whereas the Elateng ended things at 54.7. Therefore the Samsung... Although lower, an increase at 16.3 rather than the L10's 21 was still quite high and surprising for me. And finally, there was the moving the games back onto the PS5's own SSD, a heavy read operation. And this is one that the Samsung 
completely decimated the Elateng with flying colours. The Samsung starting at 27.8 and the Elateng almost 10 degrees hotter at 37.5. There was a marked degree of difference at the beginning and even when the um, temperature was raising overall on that controller throughout the test, the Samsung still managed to keep it under 50 degrees by the end of this test ending at 46.5 degrees overall and the Elateng ending at just over 50 degrees at 50.6. Overall, the result was the Samsung to increase by 19 degrees overall and the Elateng ended at 13.1. So the Samsung raised the temperature overall, but I get the impression it was starting to peak as you can see from the numbers there on screen. The Samsung overall doing better than the Elateng, but nowhere near as well as PS5 designed heat sinks. Well, I don't know about you guys, but paint me surprised. I was very, very shocked at the temperature differences between the Elateng and Samsung's own heatsink there. I really thought going into this that the Samsung would absolutely nail it, but it didn't. It, a number of occasions, it had a lower temperature dissipation or heat dissipation than out of the Elateng. This M2 $10 heatsink actually outpaced this in a number of areas. Now, remember, we were looking at not so much the uh, at max increase we were looking at the difference between the start temperature and the end temperature that there because we have to factor in ambient airflow we have to factor in that these tests were conducted on different days which again is just it's impossible to avoid because each one of these temperature tests takes around nine hours per individual ssd in a perfect run it's just not, not possible to do it in one single day but the Elateng, that $10 heatsink, on a number of occasions, actually dissipated heat better than the Samsung. Now, it should be added that the Samsung, during idle periods, and when we did our cool-down periods between games, it dissipated heat away from itself much, much faster during those periods. It just wasn't as good from what I could see at sustained temperature transference and kind of conducting that heat away from the SSD controller. Both SSDs were largely the same for the most part in terms of ambient airflow, so that was fine. But I think for me, all the evidence I've seen so far when we did our PC benchmarking and PC temperature benchmarking in my review of the heatsink version, which hopefully is linked in the description or the side of the screen, um, what we saw was this heatsink did a great job in a PC environment. But now in our PS5 environment, which is a much smaller closed bay inside there with the metal plate on the top, it didn't do as well. Now, there is a school of thought floating around, and I'll be honest, I'm one of those people, that questions the need for that M2 plate covering the SSD inside this system. Because these SSDs need to release that air. They need to release that heat. Now, Yes, the PS5 uses negative pressure where it pulls in air out the front and then pushes it out, out the back. It has been designed for that active cooling for the GPU, CPU and memory inside. And therefore, having a bloody big hot heat sink in the middle of all of that fan stuff is not going to be great. But at the same time, PS5 was designed with that M2 bay early doors. They knew they would need to upgrade that storage. And I think it's not great that the system has that M2 slot in such an inconvenient location right there in front of the fans where that plate over the top is necessary. And the result is that heatings like this that I think are better designed for PC environments don't fare as well in this PS5 system. Now, they're both M2 slots and uh, M2 SSD um, heat sinks. They're both designed for use in PCs and now utilized within PS5s, although they're not designed for it. And I think... One of the main reasons that the Elateng was able to, I hate seagulls, outperform the Samsung in some of our temperature measurements simply comes down to that this is a larger consistent build. It is a large plate there, which in a PC would be perfect. But in the PS5 in that closed system, what you're creating is a large brick of metal contained in a small box that doesn't have the air running through it to you know, necessitate and free up all of that airflow. If you look down the barrel of it, it is vented, but nowhere near as clearly vented as that of that $10 heatsink. And the result is what limited airflow was in that bay, there's just more space there and it's also a shorter one overall. So yes, when it comes to getting a heatsink and looking at that Samsung, it is a great heatsink. And if you're going to get a Samsung SSD anyway, I would still recommend it because it wasn't 
that different. It was a little bit in the grand scheme of things. When we look at the starting temperature and the end, remember we are looking at the middle. We're not looking at the numbers at the beginning or end. We're looking at the change in between. It still did a bang up job. And if you're going to get that Samsung anyway, you might as well get it with the heat sink on board. And hopefully the pricing will improve over time. And therefore you won't have to look at that and go, 2030, how much? And from all of this, well, the big takeaway I want you to take from this is to think about cooling in your system. Think about heat sinks that, although aren't going to negate and impact the overall PS5 system, think about the longevity of your SSD. This is a great SSD, and you want it to last for the rest of your gaming time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, chuck me a like. It helps me understand what videos... Uh, you know what I'm doing right in these videos and make each video better than the last. If you need help choosing the right storage system for your console, for your NAS, your DAS, even USB, your cloud, Thunderbolt, whatever, use the free advice section linked in the description over to NAS Compares. Genuinely, you know, free advice system there with me and Eddie the web guy answering as many emails as we can. Completely free. We don't do anything with your email. Couldn't give a stuff about your email. There's donate buttons. Use them. Ignore them. It's totally up to you. We're just there to help. We have lives, but we try to answer everyone. It might take us an extra day or so. Ask and ask questions in the comments. It's genuinely appreciated, but it makes it incredibly hard to follow those up and come back to them because we get a lot of messages every day in the comments. So if you need help, use that free advice section there. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click subscribe to learn more, and I will see you next time.